<laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, Charlie. How's it going? <laughs> going great. All right. So who are we? Who are we chatting? Who are we winging it with tonight, Charlie? So uh, yeah. So tonight we're gonna uh, we're winging it with uh, Elizabeth Babin, who um, is who I knew from uh, Loop Gallery. We we're both uh, showing at Loop yep. Gallery, uh, and uh, Elizabeth started uh, started out her career actually as a nurse, and went uh, decided she wanted to go back to art school, and mm -hmm. went to OCAD, and then mm -hmm. later went on to do her, her MFA. Um, her work uh, kind of spans uh, kind of a diverse range of painting, uh, installation, uh, and it seems like currently she's doing these um, fabric installations uh, that are collaborative with people who, and I'm not sure if it's, she's doing workshops or if it's just people who drop by the gallery, but um, mm -hmm. we'll ask her about that. Sounds great. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Winging It. Uh, yeah, don't say you're sorry. We yeah. love having you. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Take a deep breath. And <laughs> I, believe, I even got my husband up here and he says, yeah. I don't understand this Facebook messenger. He says, maybe your Gmail. And then it clicked. That's how I've done it before with them. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> so then you just go and yeah. Oh, so I'm so <sighs> sorry about that. Anyway, how are you doing? It's been a long time, my friend. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice to meet you, Mark, as well. Nice you look familiar, you. though. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, he was, of course, in the winging it video, so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's fine. That's probably Mark, cool. Mark and I have been doing this for uh, since November of last year, I think, or maybe. Right. Maybe that's September. Great. I love uh, how you're doing it. It looks very polished, really. Thank you. <laughs> Do what we can. Um, and of course, uh, so we, we originally started doing them uh, around Toronto in person. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, with the lockdown, we started using Zoom. Yeah. And we've uh, interviewed artists from Mexico City, New York, the UK, Sault Ste. Marie, and wow. now we're in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> well, Going out west. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why don't we just jump? ask you, can I just ask, so you're in Saskatchewan, you, yeah. you were in Toronto, is that correct? I, I, Previously. I, yeah, yeah. Previously in Toronto. Toronto area. Lived in Toronto, moved to the country. So how do you find the transition as an artist from Toronto and the Tor Toronto's art scenes? I won't, I won't make it a monolith, mm -hmm. but the various art scenes in Toronto, how do you find the transition to Saskatchewan? Well, it actually transitions a lot better than I, I, I expected. Initially, I was mortified when my husband wanted to move out here. <laughs> I was, that's exactly what I was thinking. How am I going to do this? But there is a vibrant art scene out here. And um, when I moved out here, I found that my work started to change. And mm -hmm. I started moving from the painting to more installation based. And it actually brought me to the uh, conclusion that I wanted to go back and uh, and do my MFA and look more at installation video that sort of that sort of thing so so it's been good you know and there's some uh, wonderful artists out here but of course I also miss the vibrancy yeah, of Toronto yeah. and all of this it's well, and being part of loop was uh, quite a oh. uh, the collective right environment yeah. uh, energy um, I actually wanted to, uh, I thought a good starting point, besides the, the Saskatchewan thing is, um, <laughs> you, you, came, you, you actually started your kind of working life doing something else. Yes. Maybe you were a nurse and then you, just curious as how you made that leap uh, and what kind of triggered that going to OCAD and then kind of uh, leaping into the um, art, to the art world and, and uh, you know, I can uh, recall those paintings that that used to show at Loop, yeah. uh, maybe ten or twelve years ago. I don't know how far back they were. That were yeah, it's um, about right. people will have seen already in this video, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the swirly, like I just uh, the, they were very colorful, swirly, gestural, uh, <laughs> gestural, but they also had yeah. like tiles and like some mm -hmm. architectural stuff. Expressionistic. Yeah. So I guess the question was. 
can you talk about that that decision to leave uh, nursing and 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 follow you know like something what did you follow into the arts world well i you know I, I i was always interested in art and as a young person used to spend a lot of time drawing mostly portraits and that sort of right. thing and i certainly i did want to go to art school um and i recall um asking my, my mom even like you know um, if i could do that and she says oh think of something else <laughs> <laughs> a lot of artists are starving out there and uh, you've got good grades think of something else being the oldest of seven and you know I, I somehow saw the logic in it and I and I, I have no regrets I enjoyed my uh, nursing experience I, I practiced as a nurse for about 10 years and uh, and then um, after spending about four years in the States I was um, practicing in well, Philadelphia and New Jersey. And we moved back, I had a child. And it was my husband who, because I've been painting now, I started to paint right. on my yeah, own. Yeah. And as uh, soon as we, we moved to Toronto, he uh, got me a catalog. And at that time it was OCA, Ontario <laughs> College of Art. That's where I, I went, OCA. Taking, <laughs> I just started taking some courses. And, yeah. and, I, and, and I think after about, you know, one or two, I would, I realized, you know, this, this is who I am. This is, you know, so at the beginning, as a young mom with having babies, I had four children during that period. I, um, I was just taking one or two courses a year. And, uh, and then there was a little bit of a break because I got very involved with child rearing, but I kept painting. Right. Uh, then I decided to go back. And that's when I ended up doing my BFA and, uh, um, yeah. And that's how I got to know you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, shortly yeah. afterwards. And so, yeah, and, and, and it's interesting yeah. because I grew up in a farm, on a farm in a little rural town in Quebec. And I can tell you, I never went to galleries, didn't know anything about art. Uh, we did have art books, but they were all like Dutch, old sure, Dutch yeah. masters. Yeah. And so for me, that's what art was. So it was a real growing and learning experience for me going to school. Yeah. Did you was find it that or was it kind of overwhelming? Yeah, experiencing all, all uh, the, the, the you know the new, the contemporary for the first time. Well, it's interesting. I was initially a little bit um, you know had a very narrow view of what art was, and um, but I'm so thankful that I went into the uh, what do they call it? It's the the first year uh, bit, foundation foundation, foundation level yeah. because yeah. I was so thankful because that's where you start opening up. But I remember the first semester thinking, holy moly, I thought I was taking media and she's got <laughs> us doing soft sculpture and she's got us doing you know, all this other stuff. And, uh, but then, you know, it started to click, that light bulb went out and how much more exciting that was actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you probably hit, were surrounded by like young, crazy artists who were loved it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved it yeah. yeah so I went back as a mature student at that time you know my early 30s um, and then after a 10-year break went back and now I was in my mid 40s mm -hmm. yeah so um, viewers will have seen some of your paintings by now and can you talk a bit about I remember there sort of being some some there were there were the ones that were kind of like cathedral windows windows. Uh, oh. Weren't there some that were sort of like two mm -hmm. parts with sort of like oh uh, like windows? They were like diptych ideas. Yeah, okay, and, yeah. but, and and other ones were you know the again the swirl ones that were very yeah, colorful. The, the ones with, with, where we were doing swirls those were more those were very um, um, gestural like they'd start off that way and then I would start to get more introspective with them and get start harnessing the the drips and stuff like that and start working sure with like within the, all that gestural I, I remember seeing one show and looking up close and like man it was very uh um almost detail. painstaking in terms of the detail and yeah and like the smaller elements within that yeah, there was one, I'm wondering if you're referring, like I've got a couple, there was one where, okay. where I was referencing optic art, the okay. underlying was more optic okay. art. Okay, yes, yes, exactly. 
Yeah, and so the underpaintings were sort of a marriage between the raw canvas and gesso, first of all, and painstakingly doing optic art first. Okay. Yeah, then okay. I was interested to see what's going to happen if I go over my gestural process. And it really right. does alter it considerably, you know, you get a, it moves it away. But I was fascinated by that particular um, disturbance within right right well it, it creates various layers of yeah experiencing it yeah and then and then going back into it as i have often done and starting to you know manipulate it further right right yeah right yeah. and then so then so that was the last work i remember seeing of yours and then uh going online and seeing the i, I didn't i think it was at loop the Plastopia, was that it? Oh, Plastopia, yeah. yeah. My, dis my dystopian world. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was very, like the, the videos that uh, uh, Barb did, uh, Barbara did that, um, like really haunting and, you mm -hmm. know. Really but, but oh, also, the, videos, the videos I did, Barb oh, took pictures for me. She took the photos, okay, but okay. I took, okay. I took the, the videos were part of the installation. And actually, oh, they were, okay. I, I should backtrack just a little bit because the genesis of that work was really, I, I had, I'd gotten very involved with Fibonacci and number sequences right, and, right. Uh, in my work and then looking at sacred geometry and that became underpaintings too, you know? Right. And, um, and I think after that body of work, I, I, I started looking for new ways to, to convey what I was trying to, to research and, and bring right. forth with, with this um, Fibonacci. Because I was looking at the number sequences as being sort of like the truth, you know, mathematical sure. equations as being the truth. Um, and then I had an, I was, by this time now, I was doing my MFA and still pursuing it that way. And um, I had a visit from David Garneau, <laughs> sort of, and when I was talking to him about it, he says, uh, Fibonacci isn't always correct. You know, it's not <laughs> always, it doesn't always apply. And it really rattled me a little bit. And I started to start look at, looking at things differently. And um, I had a body of work that I did, which I, I've documented, but have never really shown outside of okay. the university, which was, uh, I was trying to look for that interconnection because I'm always looking for that. And um, I started looking at what I, the resources that I used and had, and I realized when I looked at all the books, and then I had tarot cards, and then I had runes, and I had crystals, and I thought, oh my god, I'm a new age junkie. So I, I came this or a modern really mystic, yes. over the top, yeah. new age junkie with mirrored mylar all, all over the place. I had these sort of the wheel of fortune, you know, where I say, you know, look very, very carefully, ask your question and your question will be revealed. And, and then this thing would spin so fast that you could never read the answers, you know, but, okay, but start right. <laughs> deep breathing and meditate. So it was that kind of a thing. Sure. So, so I guess I, I started looking at things that way. And I started realizing that within my work, here I'm always, was always trying to find that inner center and meeting and, and then realizing that there is a disconnect between my, my consumption, whether it was a consumption of this material, like when is enough enough? Right. A lot of these books say the exact same thing over and over. Oh and over. yes, no, for sure. The, uh, the, the um, sp spiritual thrill, thrill, thrill seeking, right? Sort of like, um, yeah, spiritualism meets capitalism, right? right. Um, and the marketing of spirituality. The, the th one of the things that struck me looking at the imagery online of, of, uh, pl of Plastopia, and I, I wish I had seen it live, um, on the one hand, you, you express in your statement that it's, it's partly or maybe largely about overconsumption and about just plas you know, the plasticity and plastic world taking over the environment and the, the impact on the environment and the impact on our, our, ourselves and our inner mm -hmm. lives. But on the other hand, it's also a really beautiful work, right? It it, it just the, the the color, the opulence, and just and and the design of it. It just works. In, in, yeah. it, it's dazzling.
how how would you do you, is there a need to reconcile those two yeah there is uh, sort of opposition and, 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 or and not? part of it was deliberate too because i wanted there to be a hook you know like like why do we do this what is the enticement yeah. what makes us go for the next thing and the next thing there's always a hook right, right, that right. keeps pulling you in pulling you in so for example even the waterfall you know that, that plastic and right. when you think about it, it's so opulent and kind of really disgusting when you think about it. it's all these plastic streamers and I right. had spliced all these water bottles and you can't, it, it, up close, you, as you move forward, you even see these water bottles in, the, in this waterfall as well. And then the strobing lights and stuff. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, people would walk into the gallery, oh, this is so beautiful. You know? <laughs> yes. I just never got it too. You know, like there was also, I had start, not at Lou, but. <laughs> I, 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 here in Saskatoon, I had star foam peanuts all over the floor. People were lying down doing the snow angels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you have those mirrored mylar. I had all kinds of mirrored mylar. So some of it was th those funhouse distortions, and some of right. them were more, you know, fractal, fractured sort of mirrors, and just that sort of thing happening. But more introspective people would start walking around, and then they start looking at all, <laughs> all of this over, you know kill with all of these materials yeah. And yeah so it wasn't always beautiful i think no but, but it, my it, guess it, is they were mostly recycled plastics right oh, oh yeah they were <laughs> mostly <laughs> mostly uh but i still yeah. plan to use what i have but i'm starting to need a storage space for okay. a lot of this stuff you also uh, mentioned that it, it the work had a little bit to do with your overconsumption in your life as an artist yeah. can you talk yeah. a little bit about that well yeah i mean i think as an artist well listen even when i had to move from ontario to saskatoon it was painful because i had to discard a lot of stuff yeah I find new homes for it or maybe even discard it because now okay. i have to, yeah. pay to transport it and and yet, you know, I, I, I'm like, I could use this maybe at some point, you know, and I think as an artist, um, we, t well, I shouldn't speak for everybody, but I certainly collect a lot of stuff, you know, thinking yeah. that somewhere, some, maybe not now, but, you know, five years from now, I might want to use it. And often... <laughs> There are things that I will use, you know, much later. I, I couldn't think of it right now, but it, it, it enticed me, <laughs> this thing. So now I have it, right? For I, I can't throw away any packaging. Yeah. I've got yeah. a garage full of styrofoam, cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. Just, yeah. But yeah. just as, as an artist, you go through materials, and you may yeah. go through materials yeah. Yeah. very, very quickly. Like, I've got right here <laughs> a specific pen that i buy from a i'm not going to na name the store but it's a it's not an art supply store yeah. um but it has the it's it's i like it better than sharpie and i shouldn't yeah. have even said a brand name here <laughs> um, and i go through these things like crazy because i'm working on paper right now black and white ink and just simple markers and pens and so forth and i go through these things like crazy and it weighs on my conscience that i'm all the waste i'm producing in an effort to create something, whatever, I mean, you could call it beautiful, you could call it intriguing, something that absorbs, whatever is the reason we make art. But I'm creating an awful lot of waste in that are, process. Are you thinking glad to find that, uh, I was glad to find out our local art supply store does have a recycling box. Oh, good. They have been, yeah. For art supplies. So that, that appeased my conscience a little bit, but I don't know how much of that material in, in all of those pens. Wow. And those are just pens. Those are just small oh, things. Know, but, or, but, but you know, I don't know if you've ever bought the those. You know, that those we go the, through. the ones that you can, you can breathe Refill, in. yeah. And yeah. I've ruined some really expensive ones because I haven't been really good at properly yeah. cleaning them too. So there's that yeah. other, like you try yeah. and then. Yeah. And all the paper I use, so the trees that I've been, you know, throttling, how many forests yeah. have gone to, to help create stuff and all the paper I end up throwing out. <laughs> Because, oh, this drawing isn't working out, shred, it's gone. It'll get recycled to some extent, but it's still. So yeah. when I saw that in your statement, I mean, it really resonated with me. And I think it should resonate with most artists because we are all, no matter where we are politically on the spectrum or otherwise, 
we're all mass consumers and producers, but also we, we create a lot of um, refuse. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a even, even the yeah. wonderful stuff, there's still the the off the byproduct. Yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge to ends up in land it kind of, at least in, hopefully in a bit. It's it's a challenge, you know, yeah. just being alive to not consume, right? So yeah. No matter how hard well, you try to. See. I mean, just look at computers or look at anything that we're using yeah. now. Our our cell yeah. phones, everything's designed yeah. so that we are, you Absolutely. know, yeah. we have to yeah. go to the next thing, you know. Yeah. As much yeah. as I resist it, but. When I was married, we had a, a washer and dryer that my ex-wife still has that's 50 years old not so much better. but if you bought it 10 years ago it'd be dead now right yeah you'd have to buy a new one but yeah, because so it was 50 years topics. old yeah uh you know it, it it needed some repairs or something but it was it was constructed so well yeah. that <laughs> it's it probably lasts another 10 years the simplicity too i think that's yeah. a big part yeah. of it and yeah. it's so deliberate and that's what's so frustrating even if you don't want to, you know, you, you, you know, I don't know where we could get stuff like that even anymore. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Your your more current work uh, is I don't know how you do fabric tapestry I'm not sure how you yeah I'm I'm, I'm actually and I'm still by the way still working also with some of the old refuse like roofs okay refuse, great even, yeah even like the styrofoam peanuts like they don't they don't even uh, recycle that in this province right, so right. I'm making like styrofoam <laughs> peanut hat clouds that I stitched together oh, right, right. I saw like that. that and uh, using those vegetable and creating other things with stuff but um but yes I uh, my mother had passed away about um and I've always been interested in textile um about oh I was gonna say two years ago but now I think it's four years ago time really goes by quickly yeah and as I've been, I've also been very interested in experimental textile and also teach a class yeah. here yeah. Uh, called Experimental Textile. And I started to think about my roots with that. My mother always, uh, as being uh, one of seven kids, she basically made all our clothes and everything, anything that was textile that needed doing, she would do. She, she, and she did beautiful embroidery, she did everything. And so it starts you to, I started to think about it and started to think about textile work historically too, like, you know, Rosa Parks, or not Rosa Parks, but Rosica. I'm thinking of uh, um, her, the subversive stitch, for example, you know, when she talks about um, um, a lot of this work not being taken seriously, you know? Right, yes, yeah. Yeah, and then of course you had the 60s, I guess, where um, women's lib, we're certainly starting yeah, to come yeah. on board and bring. So people are getting away for tr from traditional skills. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, when I was at OCA in the 80s, de-skilling was the thing. Like, yes. I, I, I know several people who graduated with no marketable skills. Mm. And they made art in a way that was so, like almost, uh, like anybody could make it. There was no skill involved. And they were proud of that. And it's almost like we we de-skilled ourselves over a course of 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, and and I mean, I know uh, nowadays uh, so-called millennials are loving learning knitting and 
uh, crocheting and macrame and you know all kinds of craft things and, yeah yeah and it brings yeah. you more in touch with you know like i've even started spinning and started yeah yeah, yeah. That spinning well. your own wool yeah, yeah. and felting yeah. and and doing all those yeah. things that i hadn't even imagined you know that, yeah. that didn't, the spinning and the felting did not happen in my house but certainly weaving i saw my mother doing yeah. that and yeah but all of those things just bring you back and an understanding of where all these things come from rather than, oh, you go buy it in a store and then maybe sure. <laughs> your grandmother does something with it, you know. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah. really nice to see. And it's nice to see that it's, uh, I would say, in the last, like, I don't even think textile was as big even when I was, um, I, I went back to OCAD and I did in 2001. Um, and then uh, finished my, um, did my BFA, graduated uh, in 2005 from that. And um, I don't even think it was as big then either. It's really started to boom really more, what, to last 10 or so years? I right, think. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know the work that Catherine Hurd does. Yes. We interviewed her recently and uh, she's like in, uh, doing the red work, you know, and uh, integrating that into, uh, you know, a very social conscious kind of uh, social political art. Yeah, and I think, I think that's what's happening with, um, with textile art to a great degree right now too. A lot of it is bringing, a lot of it's reclaimed materials. Right, right. You know, yeah. and bringing in that social uh, conscience yeah. or even, um, oh, what's his name, L? Oh yeah, the, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know you mean. Yes, yes, I know who you mean. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to say his he's, name, but he's, he's working oh. and a sweet no. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, he's, I'll, pa I'll I'll edit in his name and his work. Yeah. He had a show at the AGO. Yeah, like, and you know, years ago. And looking through the colonial lens also. With all the bottle caps, the beer bottle yeah. caps and stuff. Oh my god, they were so that so, was one of the most amazing shows I've ever. Very pre beautiful and it's just yeah. and and speaking to the trade between slavery and right. um, I guess it was alcohol <laughs> trade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And the reclaiming of those simple materials. Yes, yeah. 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 And it, you know, when you look what's happening in the oceans, I mean, there are artists, there's what's her name, Aurora Robson was doing she, beautiful, yeah. beautiful work yeah. with um, like, I think it was 9,000 bottles or something where water bottles, right. you know, yes, those yeah. beautiful, you know? Yeah, I'm noticing uh, there's another artist I follow uh, from the, the southern United States who combs the uh, the ocean and creates uh, sculpture from the Oh, stuff. is that Posse? Is, it, is that the last name? No, her name is uh, Pam Longobardi. Okay, because there's another yeah. one. She was part of the group, Posse, and, and I think that what they did okay. is they collect all the stuff from the is it the Washington okay. Sea Coast, perhaps? Uh, I can't remember how many tons of yeah. plastic, and they, then they create these sea creatures, wow. huge oh, sea man. creatures. Yeah. Um, that uh, this only makes me feel so much more guilty for, for <laughs> you know what? creating you stuff that they <laughs> those pads and start making. <laughs> That's right. Glue them all together. <laughs> well, I, I, I have a lot of my dried out pens. I haven't thrown them out because I use them until they're completely dried out. I just use the dried out parts in the art somehow. Yeah. To try to, uh, so, I mean, that helps a little bit, but it, it doesn't... Uh, Don't waste it. It's not it. the same as reclaimed <laughs> materials. So were you using reclaimed materials in your um, more recent pieces? Yes, actually I was. Yes, like reclaimed. In fact, because it was called Her Industry Reclaimed, I, 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 I decided to also deal with, um, with patriarchy as well. Right. So okay. a lot of them are uh, deconstructed men's suits. Oh, oh that started off. Okay. And totally, not totally removing the structure, but working so much into it that it becomes feminized <laughs> in the process, okay. you know? And yeah. so um, I took some enjoyment of playing around with that. And even in order to create, I mean, certainly the crochet will create relief and create um, texture and stuff, but I also took pleasure in using pipe cleaners because again, I see that as a very patriot. They used to use 
for their pipes yes, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then I started wrapping hundreds of them and they also end up within these pieces and then I crochet them and they come out more and stuff. So I really played a lot with uh, with that. I also, and I incorporated vegetable bags, you know, those netted vegetable bags okay, sort of came right. into a lot of these pieces as well. And uh, um, How does the uh, the collaborative element come into play? Do you do workshops with people, or do people just come into the gallery and contribute? Yeah, well, but it? when I first went to when I went to Loop, I really enjoyed just having a workshop, just showing people how to do different things that hadn't done, and so and I enjoyed that so much that I had then I later had a show here in the city, and I thought, you know what? Why don't I start a piece? I'll start it. So I just started with the piece. And I'll invite the public to join me. And I, I set a time every afternoon that I would be there. So then people would come and I'd have tons of reclaimed materials. And if they wanted to bring something, they could, you know. And uh, we would sit together and they would do. And th some people would decide that they would add it themselves. Other people would say, no, you add it. Here, I've done, here's my thing. Oh, well, could you put it on a purple vegetable <laughs> bag? <laughs> that for you, yeah, yeah. you know? so it sort of works that way and, I, and actually I have a, a, a bunch of things that people have given me that I can still continue to add on um, but that piece I was hoping but then COVID came along I was hoping that I would be able to take it to different venues or even to parks like just go to parks right, that right. and invite people to come and join me and continue because I want this piece to get bigger and bigger and want it to you know, undulate and go up to the ceiling and down again. And that's the idea behind that piece. But unfortunately, that's one piece that I don't think uh, would lend itself too well with what's going on right now. Yeah. 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 Um, they have to wait. At least that part of it may have to wait. <laughs> I but, so. but I could see that that kind of work, um, people don't necessarily uh, feel like they have to have, you know, if you came in and said, okay, you know, add to this painting, people might be reluctant, but because mm -hmm. it's material and it's... Well, there's also a tradition the, behind that too, the right? tradition, like, that's right. These, there's mean, tradition and there were that people... regards brought communities together. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's also... Yeah, and it's also not just... It, it's also, I've told people, you don't have to know how, you right. know? This yeah. is a teaching moment. Like, like I remember one, one uh, friend of mine who was doing her master's at that time, and she came over, she says, you know what, I'd love to learn how to crochet. So I said, sure. So I sat down and just showed her, and, and, I, and, and just said, just play, just, just navigate your way. Don't worry about this, just get comfortable with doing it, you know? So when she was done, it was really cute. She held it up, and it was this really tight little bulbule little thing. She says, well, I don't know what this is. <laughs> But here it is <laughs> Put it in the piece. And then I said, would you like to take this yarn back with you and, and the crochet hook to practice more? She says, yeah. So she came back the next day and what she had was something that was very loose and organic and actually very pretty. And I said, and the name of the piece is called Eve. And I guess you could figure out why <laughs> all our ancestors coming together and working. So, uh, so she, um, so that went on the piece as well. So I also see it as a, also an opportunity to learn and experience something new. And that's something I should mention too, that each piece in that particular show and in her uh, industry reclaimed, I named after a different ancestor, starting with my mother, you know, and, and of course, when I did that, it also harkened back different things about them, and that would also um, influence how I approached them as well, yeah. So you, you really, there was a real personal component to, uh, to, to um, her, her industry reclaimed, uh, to, to that installation sort of your personal connection to a tradition, to an artistic tradition and a, 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 with a, a very long history 
you know, yes. going back to the Neolithic period, <laughs> going back <laughs> forever. Yeah, oh, and then even the metaphor and the symbolism of many fabric, many threads yeah. together. Um, and even the felt, because it was a lot of felt in there too happening, like needle felting and stuff right. like that. And when and I, I would imagine that, you know, that might have been part of the beginnings too of, of fabric when you think about it, right? The, mm. the sheet matting together, you start getting felt and you start getting that, you know, so all that kind of stuff. Um, um, I was harkening back to some of that stuff as well, but as we, but we keep evolving and keep moving forward and, and with our work and how we proceed. I want to ask, and this is a slight change in direction, um, and, and it's partly because of, you know, we were talking about it, uh, works that are very personal to you, but, but you also dealt with some serious mathematical uh, uh, <laughs> theory uh, in, in some of your work, and you were talking about it a bit earlier uh, today, um, and I'm going to have to look this up because I'm never going to remember the name. Um, but don't say it. Let me pronounce it. <laughs> Fibonacci equation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, okay. I know that you have a, a, a bit of a, you had a medical background. Where does the math come in? Oh, and, I didn't. And, I didn't. And, I, didn't I, and I know it was sacred geometry. Was well, it started there. It started with sacred too. geometry. I, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Because I was, I was, I was, I think I had gone, I'd gone to Italy. And um, I guess it was there, you know, you go to these, oh, gorgeous cathedrals that probably took 300, 400 years to build. Bunch of wars probably changed hands a number of times. People died building them. And yet they feel so reverent, right? When you're in there. <laughs> yeah, but when you think about all, everything around it, you're thinking, oh my God. Um, but I started thinking too, not just about that, but sacred spaces in general, you know, so I started mm. to think about that. And, and I, and I did remember from art history that there were some, um, that around the Renaissance, um, yes. like, uh, like, uh, Leonardo, for example. Yeah. 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 They, they looked on those, they looked at those proportions, right? right. In, but Fibonacci in, also relates to nature, right? The spiral. Yes. 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 Exactly. And then, and then, of course, as I started to research that, then I came upon Fibonacci, and I thought, oh my God, that's so brilliant, right? Sort of how how that numerical. System. It is. It is really, in a way, it's sort of a, a, a an intersection of nature, art, and science, or math. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it you know in the way it, uh, the math can articulate the underlying structure of so much of the real world, right? Yeah, uh, the DNA. Yeah, DNA. And, and apparently, the more complex it gets, the closer and closer and closer the ratio becomes, which I thought yes. was pretty yes. intriguing. I started with paintings and doing the underlying more. It had to do more with the structures, like the spiral, and then in architecture, and I would overlay. But then later, I got into two other bodies of work. Uh, one body was pre-MFA, and it was called um, Cosmic Fishnet. Mm -hmm. And I started on Jinwashi paper, I started doing a few things. I started to either um, stencil, the, this there's a particular design called that I called the cosmic fishnet that I had read encompassed every single geometric design and out of it you could get 3D or 2D. Mm -hmm. So I called it cosmic fishnet. So I used it, I, I, I would print it, 
I would cut in this very lacy effect, it, not everywhere. Sometimes it was just the stenciling. And I actually painstakingly hand wrote sequentially <laughs> going and going at very labor, make mistakes, be aware of the mistakes, bracket them, that sort of thing. And um, so I created some these large scrolls that would be like three layers deep. Yes, yeah. And then I ended up <laughs> taking tool, you know, the stuff that they use for tutus and stuff. Yeah. And I actually stitched with the sewing machine and gold thread that particular design and yeah. would leave fringes as well on it. And I tried to put that veil on everything. So it would be, so I would have these papers at different layers and then with these nails out from the wall, this would sit in front of it. And then I decided to also do some um, 3D structures and I used Tyvek that I painted gold and whatever and I cut them and I just decided to keep one, just take one three dimensional. So I did like a hexagon kind of the, the hmm. um, all of a sudden I'm getting, the name is not escaping me, but using that particular structure. So I would have, you know, sometimes it'd be six or they'd be one, but then everything, I made these very ornate plinths mm -hmm. that they sat on with these. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the plinths were, were amazing. Now it, I could see the plinths being fun to make. I'm yeah. trying to visualize the fun in writing these equations. They're, they're I mean, conceptually, they're just mind blowing. But the, the time and the effort put well, into writing these, did you find, and, and these were precise numbers, right? These are specific were numbers. precise numbers that I was following. I was following it. Like I, I printed them out ahead of time and then I would write okay. them. Right. And it was painstaking. And, and I didn't have enough after that show. After that show, I did another one called Hieroglyphs. <laughs> right, right. On Tyvek. And I yeah. used Tyvek because I liked the width of it and, I, and Sharpies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you had already kind of transitioning out of the more traditional painting, or I mean, it was it was yeah. abstract painting, but yeah. Um, yeah, this is a long way from 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 abstraction. From yeah. Just pure yeah. abstraction. Well, what's really funny too about that too is sort of I was thinking it like that Zen. I, I I was going after a Zen kind of look, where, where if you just walked in, you might have felt that until yeah. you looked at it. <laughs> and I think, right, okay, I think right. you do because it is a feeling of it's a hieroglyphic kind of feeling so it feels like something very ancient but the process of putting that together was that zen did you feel like no, it was amazing? no it was, <laughs> it was it was painful it was times when you your arm, it was just painful and then you yeah. make a mistake and then you bracket it and and who knows there's probably more mistakes that i missed so there's that whole process that goes into it and went, but i felt it was also important to yeah. <laughs> include that stuff right but at the end when it's done how are you feeling like okay i've completed this and i see it all together are you just in awe i felt good about it yeah i, I, I it was the way i wanted it to be like yeah. i wanted that that Zen kind of, and I wanted people to look at it and say, oh my God, is, what, who's the crazy person that's scratching all these numbers on this paper? Right. And I also had a video that accompanied it. And on the video, um, oh, and I tried, I had many, many different things that I tried with the video. I even had the GoPro and it ended up looking yeah. like a fishbowl effect, which is, <laughs> you know, and then finally I just came with something less sophisticated where I just, you know, just did a, a, a little bit with my cell phone and then you know you do the reversal and I kind of like that writing it and then I like the reversal sort of reminded me of Anne Hamilton you know I don't know if you've oh, ever yeah. seen oh yeah yeah, yeah. Where, where it's sort of like ghost I forget the name of it she but often has people in in her installations like writing or knitting yes. and doing well she also has one where she actually has a video thing that goes around okay. making lines and, and, and then you see her her hands making the lines and then it disappears and i sort of did that with once i get to the bottom of the page the pigeon and then i did the reverse thing where now these numbers are going into the it's or into the unknown into what we don't really know or understand so it was kind of
Are, are you teaching in the fall? I was asked if I would do some Zoom needle felting, and so oh. I will be in touch um, and with the, I would love to do the experimental textile, that's my baby. <laughs> but um, maybe we'll try that first. And I, I have a feeling maybe I'll have to make some little videos first and maybe put them on YouTube and work it that way with Zoom. Because I'm thinking, how does that work, you know? It, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I marvel at, uh, well, I, I marvel is not, not the right word, but I'm, um, I'm, I'm curious in, uh, as to how the, the, the art schools are going to function in the fall. You know, yeah, how do you teach yeah. art online or remotely? Uh, or if you do it in, the, in a classroom setting, it's going to be a completely different kind of setup. Yeah, I, I think especially with, like I was talking to one of my uh, uh, friends who's teaching at the university, but she's been teaching drawing at the university. And she said, yeah. that she's, you know, there's some applications there that I'm really liking that I think I might bring into in class things eventually. Right, uh, right. For others, there are other, like one uh, prof that I had was saying, really challenging with installation work, right? I mean, it's not like students have this big space that they can right. sort of, you know. You'd be creating installations in their dormitory. Or <laughs> yeah, this little, little this miniature. Tiny apartment well, or or the other people. Outside, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there are some interesting challenges. with uh, Saskatoon yeah. weather, we'll have to come up with <laughs> creative, creative uh, outdoor. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, so I think that there, there are going to be challenges. And then I have another friend who will, one nice thing is that she lives here but teaches at Concordia and she usually goes for one semester. She's also okay. a wonderful textile artist. That's Mindy Ann Miller. She was with Luke. Okay. And so she's working that out right now with teaching the textile stuff okay. online. Well, I mean, it'd be interesting because, you know, Toronto is in phase three, which means that people can gather and I know the schools are planning to go back in the fall and yeah so uh but yeah. I know the universities here are, are still it sounds still, like the okay yeah. right okay now the only thing He's here right old. now I'm told will be the labs you know some labs right. and okay. um, yeah but everything else will be remote yeah, yeah. I think for artists that's very challenging I would think sure. and, that, and that's what I'm you know curious and puzzled about is how how they going to do it um yeah something yeah. can be done but uh so much of art really needs to be in person well we should we should uh bid you adieu yeah. and uh it's been uh great chatting with you and uh hearing well, about your process same here i i really enjoyed the the the, the, the chat and miss you charles and lovely to meet you mark Great yeah, meeting you, yeah. too. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And I look forward to keep, I'm going to keep following you. I think your webinar is great. I'm really enjoying Thank it. You. Thank you. Okay. Farewell. Yeah. Farewell. And, uh, farewell. And great uh, chatting with you. And uh, we look forward yeah. to seeing the next installations. Sure. And maybe one day we'll <laughs> see you in person in Saskatoon or so, Toronto. Yeah. yeah, we're, we're, yeah. We, we do plan, I think, to retire out back. We still have our place in Caledon. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Take care. Thanks. Be in touch. Bye, Charles Bye. and Mark. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.